Hi, welcome into my studio and on this short video I'm going to show you how to fix a ruined pastel and basically get back to the basic paper. Okay, so let me show you basically what I did. Pastel matte paper, drawing's half done and I'm scrubbing in a blue background with Conti stick, so a hard pastel Conti stick. Then I just rub the surface in as per usual with pastels, creates quite a bit of dust, gently rubbing it in and then I use my vacuum not touching the paper at all, just to take away that loose surface dust. Then I rubbed it in, just very lightly blended it some more. So a simple, easy blue background. It doesn't get more simple than that. Okay, so what could possibly go wrong? The part of the drawing I thought would be difficult would be to get the seal looking wet. And it turns out that the background became a, quite a big issue and I thought I'd ruined it all. So let's take a closer look. Let me tell you what went wrong and I'll show you how I fix it. So I wanted that blue layer to be completely flat, plain blue, no other details in it whatsoever. So sounds easy, but when you look at it very carefully, you can see that it's not a perfectly flat, smooth layer at all. There's actually, um, you can see the paper through it in places and no matter how much more I tried to blend it, if I put more Conti stick on top, it just wouldn't go away. So I've simulated it on another piece of pastel mat, the same color, doing the same technique, and I took a photograph so that I could play around with this and find out what was going wrong. So you can see at the top, you can clearly see the bits of paper through it, no matter how much Conti stick I was applying. Then on the bottom, I actually went over the top bottom of it with pan pastel, so very soft pastel, and it showed up even more. So that was the issue. I couldn't layer more pastel on top. And what I think was happening, and I've got another video I'm going to do going into this more deeply, more tips on pastels, is the Conti stick, because it's so hard, it went into the tooth of the paper, filled it, but it doesn't sit on the very surface of the paper. The other problem is because it's filled the tooth of the paper up, doesn't look like soft pastel or any other pastel will sit on it properly and um, not show that paper anymore. So I, I was had a real problem. What I needed to do was just do the background with soft pastel. That would have given me a perfectly flat finish. But the actual color, the exact color I wanted, I saw in my Condi sticks, seemed the easy option just to use that. So lesson learnt, when I'm doing blurry backgrounds or even coloured backgrounds, I'll be using my soft pastel, but that wasn't going to help me. So I worked out a, a technique to get this pastel back off. It's not as easy as you would at first think, so I thought I'd show you exactly how I did it on a video. It may help you out too. Okay, so here's what I did. Maybe a bit drawn out, but if it can help you save a painting, perhaps you've been on it for hours, days, weeks, and you just put in a background or an element, uh, you'll be happy that you can perhaps save it. So what I'm doing at the moment here, this is where I tried to put pan pastels on top of that uh, blue base. And you can see how it's not going on properly. I don't know if you can really make it out as well in the video as on the photograph. So that wasn't going to work whether I used any of the applicators, not the fault of pan pastel at all. It was the fact there was no tooth in the paper. Now remember what I'm going to show you, you need to be using pastel mat. If you're using anything else, you've got to try this out for yourself because there's a good chance it won't work. Okay, so don't blame me. Try it out on test pieces yourself first. So I tried to use in a fixative first, sealed off the, um, the seal itself and then sprayed it didn't work at all because virtually all these fixatives don't seal properly anyway. I needed to remove the pastel. So I've got a stiff bristle brush, got my vacuum right by it so I'm not breathing any dust in, and I started to vigorously scrub the surface, removing as much pastel as I possibly could. Now this vacuum has got a HEPA filter in it, so it's got a, a, a very fine filter, so no dust is then blowing out the back of it, and that's important. You could also do this outside or with a mask on, because it is going to produce a lot of dust. Now that's not going to remove all of the pastel, so I used a, a, a microfiber cloth, vigorously rubbing it again, and that's removing a lot more of the pastel. And I'm 
turn in the um, the rag as well so that I'm getting a clean part of it and take in as much of that pastel off as possible again. Now my next idea was to put gouache paint on there but look how it's resisting from that surface. So that wasn't going to paint straight on there. So next stage is just to get, take some plain water, synthetic brush and all I'm doing is scrubbing that water into the surface and the pastel mat is sucking it in there. Don't need to apply too much but it's helping to remove some more of that pastel from the surface. Now if you used a solvent, or if you use a solvent for this, that will seep right in to the uh, seal area. It really spread into the pastel mat whereas the water doesn't. Okay, so you can see I'm going fairly briskly. Obviously, I'm going to draw over the seal as well. Anyway, that's just my underdrawing, fortunately. But you can see I'm really giving it a good rub. And then every now and again, I dap it with some kitchen tissue. And you can start to see the pink now of the pasta mat paper coming through. So I continue to do that, then a quick dry with a hair dry, hair dryer. Well, in fact, a long dry because it is sucking up a lot of pasta. I've got it on a low heat setting. I'm just going over it and over it until it's completely dry. And that does take a few minutes. Now, obviously, you could do this on a small area as well because that water doesn't seep under the drawing. You could use this kind of technique on a small scale on just little areas. Although I haven't tested that, so once again, please test it yourself. Okay, so that's all nice and dry. Now I've got my gouache paint, so I've just taken some white gouache, a uh, little bit of blue in it, and some water, nothing else. And you can see now, it's really taken to the surface, nice and evenly, evenly no problem whatsoever. I'm just going to paint this over the whole of that background section. And with that now painted, a quick dry again with the hair dryer, and I'm ready now to be able to go over it again with pastels. This time I'm using a soft pastel. This is pan pastels, but you could use uh, pastel sticks or any other soft pastel. And what you'll see now is that the gouache itself, fortunately, also gives uh, a slightly rough texture, which takes pasta perfectly on top. So not only have I got the benefit of getting that background back a nice flat color, I can go over the top of it, refine the colors, and just treat it as normal paper. And you can see it's going over there absolutely perfectly. So I was really relieved when this started to work. Obviously, as I showed at the beginning, I tried it on a small section. So I duplicated the problem on there. And I do this a lot if I get issues. Duplicate the problem on there, fix it there, then come back to the drawing with confidence. And I know that 99% chance it's actually going to work. So all that was left for me to do was cover the whole background then with soft pastel and now I'll be ready to make a start on the seal and I'm going to have this as a tutorial on my Patreon art channel. Loads and loads of videos on there now. Hundreds and hundreds of uh, supporters and followers on there too and you'll be able to see start to finish exactly how I do the seal, how I create the wet look as well on there. So I hope you enjoyed the video, hope it helps somebody out and I'll see you all again very soon. If you're looking for even more great art sources, I've really got you covered. First off, I've got a Patreon channel. It's been going well over a year or so, packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long, so you can see they're really, really in-depth. Subjects such as um, turtles, birds, elephants, big cats, you name it, is on there. So that's my Patreon channel. And also on that Patreon channel, before I go on to something else, I've got a secret Facebook group. So only the members are actually on there. It's the most supportive and friendly Facebook group 
that I've ever seen. I know I'm biased, but it really is. We've got uh, four or 500 members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus that comes free with it. Also you get line art every month as well. And we've just designed a brand new companion website for it. So if you've joined other Patreons and uh, channels and you found it very, very difficult to navigate around, we got this free website that comes with it. All the videos are now just a single click away. Couldn't be any easier than it is. I've also got my site, jasonmorgan.co.uk. Lots of tutorial videos, DVD discs and downloads on there. And if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects, I've got some of those too. I've got 900 plus on my website, wildlifeart-online.com and they will be copyright free for you so you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever. So hope you like those extra resources and I'll see you all again real soon.